Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,782. I'm finishing up my tribute to Women's History Month with a returning guest today. I hope you've enjoyed the past 23 inspiring automotive enthusiasts throughout the month. Boy, I've had some incredible talks with absolutely phenomenal women, but don't worry. There'll always be more women here on Cars Yeah in the future. These are all women who are shifting the conversation. Here we go. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Los Angeles, California, with a very special returning guest to kind of play the, the what do they call it, Deb, in uh, baseball? Clean up the last person to bat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in the cleanup spot. You're in the That's cleanup me. spot, Deb. Paul, like Deb, welcome back to Cars Yeah. Are you ready to put it in gear and release the clutch? I am. I am. I'm a manual chick. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you are. I love that about you and many other things as well. I'll remind my regular listeners here. Uh, Deb was on the show back in December of 2016. She was guest number 667. I thought I'd talk to a lot of people then. Now she's seven, eight, 1782, not seven, 1782. Oh my. So <laughs> holy cow. Yeah, I'm amazed I have anything to say anymore, but uh, it's the guests that are important here. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, What's one little thing people don't know about you, Deb? Oh, let's see. Um, well, right now I'm currently building a Fiat Cinquecento from scratch in my kitchen. <laughs> a what? A f wait, okay. A Fiat, I know what that is. The 500. Yeah, I know what that yep, is. Yep, yep, But from in scratch your in my kitchen. kitchen. In my kitchen. What, yeah. Okay, tell me more. What's going on? It's a Lego, babe. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, come on. You, you've got to keep busy during quarantine and find some things to uh, take your mind off it. And and the one that I found, I was pretty excited about because about four or five years ago when we launched the watch for Singer Vehicle Design, Singer Reimagined, we were out in Geneva. And I got to um, enjoy meeting the owner of the watch brand and back at his little family-run shop. And his son, Nico, had this wonderful vintage Cinquecento with a great vintage luggage rack on the back and everything to it and the big roll top, you know, and there it was in yellow. It was great looking. I took all these pictures of it and I go online and this thing comes up about Lego and it's the exact car, Whoa. which, you know, brought me right back to that nostalgic moment of enjoying that time far, yeah. far away. And yeah. I said, I got to do this. And my husband looked at it and he said, it says expert in the <laughs> corner. And I said, you know what? I can read. I can play Legos. We're going to do this. So that's my project. Those are complicated. I've seen people who work on those things. But, you know, for a minute, I thought you might actually be building a car because I've had people do things like that. When I was a kid, we lived uh, for one year, two years in Del Mar, California. And there was a guy across the street building a boat, handmade, beautiful wooden boat in his garage. And I remember as a little kid standing there looking at it. And my dad came over, who's an architect. So he's always looking at surroundings. And he said, how are you going to get this out of the garage? And the guy said, <laughs> what? He goes, I don't think it's going to fit out that door. And he goes, oh, I'm sure it'll fit. Well, guess what? He had to dismantle Oops. the garage. The oh, out. no. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, you've heard about these kind of things. So I just, I was going to say, you better have a big door to get out of your kitchen. Some French uh, I doors. I be okay. <laughs> yeah, or in this case, Italian doors to open up. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. We're going to dive into your life. Deb Pollock, publicist for Boutique Restoration House Singer Vehicle Design. Oh, my bucket list car. Has served the car community since the late 1980s. Throughout the years, she's represented small brands with very big names, including Mitsubishi Motors, Ferrari, Maserati, and of course, Singer. Her automotive volunteer efforts include judging at various national and regional concours events, a philanthropic person at heart, and since 2008, she's teamed up with cars and camaraderie to support the challenges of Parkinson's disease, most notably as founder of Drive Toward a Cure, a nationally recognized 501c3 charity dedicated to finding a cure for that terrible disease. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more, but first, a word from our sponsors that make this show possible, so keep your seatbelts on. We're going to go for a ride in a little Fiat 500, I think, in a minute, so we'll be right back. One of your vehicle's interior surfaces that gets a lot of abuse is your dashboard. 
The sun beats down and those damaging UV rays cause massive heat cycles, resulting in color changes and sometimes cracks. My friends at Covercraft have a great solution for you and for me. Their custom-tailored dash mats protect your dash from heat buildup while providing a stylus solution. You can choose from a variety of styles and colors, including carpet, suede mat, that's the one I have for my vehicles, Carhartt limited edition velour mats, and the Ultimat for trucks and SUVs. Another great benefit of your Covercraft dash mat is that it eliminates the harsh glare the sun produces from your dash to the inside of your windshield, which can make driving a hazard. Covercraft's dash mat design center is located in Arizona, where they know about harsh sun. I've got a special deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 yeah 21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off. Just use the code ya 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I found a new way to protect my vehicle, American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collectibles of automobilia and automotive collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool automotive collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting us automotive enthusiasts since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did. American Collectors Insurance, classic car and collectible insurance designed by collectors for collectors, just like you and me. All right, Deb, we're back. Now let's go a little deeper into the corner here, and I want you to share a little bit more about your business first and what you do, what your role is, because you have fun playing with cars and representing some heavy, heavy hitters and some very cool people in the industry. So uh, take the wheel, Deb. It's been a fun ride, I can tell you that much. You know, I, I started way back in my in my twenties working for an agency and um, had a really really great learning experience that really grew for many years with Mitsubishi Motors. And uh, I think the best part about that was not just getting involved in the car community, but all the friends you make in the car community. And uh, most of the folks that um, I knew through them, just through uh, working together and all the media relationships and press launches, um, I'm glad to stay are still my friends today. So it, it's made for a really nice thing. And 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 when I left there, uh, I, I got to work with Ferrari and Maserati, and I worked on the PR side and also with Lifestyle. That was right when Lifestyle was kind of starting out. And so we did a lot of programs together. It was when Maserati was re-entering the United States. So it was a very exciting time to be there. And I stayed with them for quite a while. And then I had the fortunate chance of meeting Rob Dickinson at Singer. And that was back in 2009. And I've been a part of Singer since, and I'm their publicist. And um, it's been a lot of fun. It's It's been amazing to see somebody's vision really grow the way that it has and, and to have so many people around the world that really find joy in, in what they're doing. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Well, no, no kidding. And Singer, that's my bucket list dream car. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a high reach, a high bar, but I love what Rob's done, his team. I've watched him develop everything. And through you, I've heard so much more about them. He's been a guest several times on the show, and I want to thank you for that. And Deb has brought me so many wonderful people as well. She seems to know everybody in the automotive industry. And it's funny, I was looking back to when you were last on the show, and I'm like, how has it been that long? I mean, time is just it's been like five years warp speed. But I feel like, you know, I talk to you all the time. I feel like I see you all the time, although I really don't see you all the time. It's during car week, but that's the joy of these events we go to. You run into people and you think that you just saw them last week because they're your car buddy, right? So talk a little bit more about Singer. For those listeners that maybe don't know what Singer is, I don't know who wouldn't know, but there might be a few people that go, what What are they talking about? A sewing machine here? Uh, <laughs> far from it. Far from it. Well, I, I think if, um, first of all, if, if you're a fan of Porsches, then then I think you, you probably have a little bit of an idea of what Singer is all about. But it's a small company um, that's uh, more of a restoration house. 
We're not a manufacturer. We don't build cars. We simply restore them. Um, They're based in Los Angeles. And now we also have a facility out in the UK where we're doing a more advanced vehicle. And for the last 10, 11 years, we've been restoring um, owner's cars that start with a 964 chassis. And they're totally taken apart and and reimagined in a way that works together with the things that we think are part of the ultimate parts of a Porsche 911 and the bespoke ideas that owners have for how they'd like their unique vehicle to be. So, you know, anything from, you know, carbon fiber aspects to better technology, but it comes back kind of looking like a car that might have been from the 70s, even though you start out with something from 1989 to 1994, and then you put in a lot of nice technology and beautiful leathers and all kinds of great things. And it kind of becomes a, a, you know, greatest hits of the 911. Because if you take a car that was from the 70s, it will never look exactly like what we've recreated. No, <laughs> not not really. It, to me, it'd be like, it's like going back in time of the old long hoods, what we call a certain era of Porsche, which is a really coveted, wonderful area or era for Porsche. But then you could go to the factory and say, okay, do whatever I want you to do. And that's, but they didn't have the technology back then. And the thing that I love about what Singer's doing, it keeps evolving. So when the first Singers came out, the type of motor they were putting in, what they were doing with the cars, it just keeps evolving with time. So it's not the same old It build. has. Yeah. Well, and I think what's also evolved is the creativity of our clients. We, we have a whole department now that we call Special Wishes. <laughs> and that could be anything from a paint color that nobody has had before to special fog lights on there to lowering, you know, just just changing things completely. And we had we had one car that is probably at this point, it's the ultimate of the special wishes that we've done, which was the Mulholland Commission. And it was named after the famous Mulholland Highway out here. But it's a car that, you know, most of the cars, when I say named, it's really what the customers refer to them as because since we're not we're not a manufacturer and we can't name our cars, we don't have models. But at the beginning, just to separate them, we would refer them as the the, uh, the potential residents where they were going to. Mm. So, and but then they changed because people started, you know, decided they wanted to name their cars based on something that was either nostalgic or loving or a place that they wanted to be. Uh, one one person even named their car Fiona because it was his daughter's favorite Disney character. Wow. So. You know, it it just depends on the owner's wants and wishes, and we do our best to kind of come to terms together to see what those elements can be. There's a couple more aspects with Singer, too. You mentioned a watch. Yes. A few years ago, we uh, we started our own watch brand called Singer Reimagined. It's based in Geneva. And um, it's a lovely story, too, because the guy who runs it, who's the CEO, who's a wonderful designer, Marco Borcino, he just, like, like most of the people that, especially from the beginning, that began working with anything with the Singer group, got to know Rob. And, and really, you know, the beautiful part is that we're such a personalized company. And I think that Rob has always based a lot of the people that he works around on and just kind of getting along with people. And Marco um, had seen what we were doing and he's a big Porsche fan. And he dropped an email to Rob who happened to read it and said that he had these ideas for a watch. And Rob had been thinking that, you know, he's always been, you know, a watch guy and he loved the old Rolexes and, and the tags and the things that were related to cars. But he thought if we do something, we really don't want to align with a brand that is already doing things or mm-hmm. knows things. We really want to base it on our own styling and our own desire to reimagine things like we do with cars. And so Marco came out from from Switzerland and, and they had some drinks and talked and shared their ideas and it ended up that it was a match made in heaven. And the watches have been very significant. They're very limited editions and they're teamed with um, John Jean-Marc Viterac. I can't even say the last name <laughs> properly, but his company is Agenor, which is a family run company that is very award winning in the Grand Prix of Horological exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And he's done a lot with the very, very well-known brands and with Fabergé and with others. And he does the mechanics of the watch. Mm -hmm. And Marco does the design and the sales of the watch. And um, now we've we've got quite a few different tracks that we've been on with them, and they're they're fairly successful. So it's it's fun for you regular listeners, or maybe you didn't know this. Marco's been a guest here on Cars, yeah, uh, several years ago. But you can go back and find him, Marco Borracino, B O R R A C C I N O. I didn't say that in my best Italian, but you'll find him by just putting Marco in the search bar. I'd love to know, Deb. 
Who has been your driving inspiration in your life, a key mentor who really helped move you through your career, a very influential person in your world? You know, it's it's interesting because I've had the pleasure of meeting so many interesting people in the car world. And, and you know, I, I, I don't want to appear jaded, but, you know, separately from all of those type of racers and executives and important folks that might have names that are that are recognized, I, I'd have to say it was probably my first client, which was at the time the, the chief operating officer for Mitsubishi Motors. His name was Dick Rakia, and people that, um, and the media that go back that many years will definitely remember Dick because he was the very first consultant who started Mitsubishi Motors in the United States. Mm. And he stayed with the company for like 17, 18 years. And he previously had come from Chrysler and Fiat. And he was a Detroit man at heart. He he knew everybody there. He grew up there. He was from an immigrant Italian family starting a Japanese company. And the beautiful part that I learned because I was literally like 23, 24 years old and was starting to travel with him to meet the press and to get to know people. And he taught me a few things that I've kind of taken on my whole life in this in, in, in just, you know, relationships with people and, and with doing what I do as a publicist and in just enjoying the industry. And the first thing that he said was that when you get together with folks, the best way to do business is by not doing business. And it's really by, you know, powering those relationships and getting to know the people that you're with. And the second part was, was that he felt that whenever you went out to dinner, if you had more than three or four people, you always had to sit at a round table because it was really fair to have everybody involved in the conversation. You didn't want to leave anybody out. And I think, you know, we're in such a business that really at heart is very inclusive. And I think that that's a big part of it. And then I think that the last thing that he that he did when you didn't know people very well was he would start the conversations with a question. And most of it had absolutely nothing to do with cars. It, it, it might have been, you know, what was your first pet when you were a kid? Or, you know, what sport did you like to play? Whatever it was. And then suddenly everybody at the table, no matter what their level was, whether they were an executive or the admin person who happened to come to the dinner, was involved in the conversation. But you learn things about them and you got to know them personally. And, and I think that's why when I go back and I look at those first people that I met in Detroit all those years ago, we were able to really talk to each other personally and get to know each other so well. And, and we're still friends to this day. And I think it doesn't matter where people work. It doesn't matter if you're competitors. You have these commonalities. And I think if you think about that, you will always go further in what you want to do. Absolutely. He was uh, definitely made an impression and I can see why. Very wise man for sure. How would you seek other women, maybe in particular younger women who would like to get into the career path that you've enjoyed? Well, I'll tell you, um, a friend of mine, a couple friends of mine are, are doing this wonderful thing that has been incredible through the pandemic called Shifting Gears. And they started out by creating an opportunity for women of any level and any interest in cars to join in once a month for a networking type of experience. And we do a Zoom and they have an somebody special from the automotive community, whether it's an executive or whether it's a race car driver or anything, but it's a woman. And, and they talk and then we break into these breakout groups and people get to know each other. And, you know, and that's the beautiful part because there, there are people on there from all over the world that have suddenly joined. And, you know, you think I'm on a Zoom and there's a hundred people on this Zoom and they're all women of all ages giving their perceptions of where they want to be, of experiences that they've had and joining together. So I think joining things like that and not being shy to do it is the first thing. And I think that part about being shy is really important too, because our community is so friendly that even if you are shy, there there are a million ways to get involved. And just by talking to people and just by showing up, you learn so much and you get to know people and everybody's willing to introduce you to somebody else. So I think I think that's the easiest thing. And then the other part that I'd say is that once you do do all that, take advantage of those that you've seen on the screen and reach out to them. Don't just friend them on Facebook or friend them on LinkedIn, but drop a note and really get to know somebody because I think if somebody reaches out to me, I sure want to help them back. I met I met a gal through, there's a woman, um, 
Sarah, who has put together this Porsche group for for women in Porsche. Sarah de Carmen. Yeah. Yep. And she's got, you know, people all over the world that are on this WhatsApp. Any time of day, you can go on there and connect with people and talk. But through that, I met a younger woman who is out in Florida who's an artist. And she wants to get involved in some other things. And she's done good stuff with, with the Porsche events that go on down there. And her artwork is so good, it was even used as one of the grand prizes for what they did. But, you know, when she called me, I realized that may not be what her ulterior path is mm -hmm. that she wants to do. And, and I thought, that's what it takes. You call somebody and then now I'm connecting her to other people. And, and that's what it's about. You know, we're all in this together and it's not just because we're in a pandemic. It's because we want everybody's future to grow and we want our industry to grow and the best way to do that is by connecting absolutely so, great advice. so that would be my advice yeah. you know just take initiative and and go for it now let's talk more about drive toward a cure uh, has a very special place in your heart mine as well a family member close family member of mine was just diagnosed last year with parkinson and it's a challenging challenging disease um how you deal with it is is uh, all up and across the air and, and everything, but you've chosen to take a path here to do something, create something that happens around the motorsport industry, but also raises awareness and money, a lot of money, to help yeah. drive toward a cure. So let's talk about that. Well, you know, it, it really started for me kind of before it started. <laughs> I was involved when I was working at Ferrari in a concours that was going on in Northern California. And uh, Phil Hill was a part of that. Mm -hmm. And Phil had had Parkinson's. And they were raising money for Parkinson's. And I had recently lost my mom to the challenges of Parkinson's a year or two before. And so because I was working with Ferrari, I had this nice alignment, you know, with Phil. I got to meet his family. I got to know what was going on. And my heartstrings said, I want to help this cause you know, because of my mom and because of him. And I got involved through that and I started planning a one-day event for them, which was just to go on a simple drive from the Walnut Creek area up to Napa and, you know, limit it to 50 cars, charge a bunch of money and go have lunch at a winery. And that was it. They had a whole weekend of car events that were going on. And so I said, you know, you've got people with great cars that are up there, but nobody's driving them. You know, you're not doing anything together. You're just showing them in a concourse. So we started it and now it's it's been going on for a good 10 years. And they've raised a ton of money and they've got people that keep coming back. And then after that, I had decided along the way that People kept saying, why don't we do a weekend? Why don't we do something more? And at that point, I had already left Ferrari and I was working with Singer and I was just busy all the time. And I thought, I, I don't have the time to do something like this. But in 2016, my mom had been gone 10 years and she would have turned 90. And I thought, if I don't do something special now to honor her, I'm never going to take the time to really do it. And it's really about how it takes a village because you just start meeting people. And I had been, you know, maintaining relationships through the ones at the Parkinson's Institute where we were, you know, funneling the money from, from the Concord previously. And I met this wonderful guy, Derek Torrey, through, through there. And he sat down and had lunch for me he, with me. He lived in California, Southern California, and he happens to have early onset Parkinson's. And, um, and he said to me, well, what do you want to get out of this? What do you really want to do? And I said, I want to be a real thing. I want to I want to create a 501c3. I want to do it right, but I don't know how to go about it. And he said, well, you know, he said, I, I'm unfortunately, I'm on disability. I'm not allowed to work, but that's allowed me to get involved in so many things. Mm. And he said, and through that, I've met this gentleman who is an accountant and they've done lobbying things together and they've worked on other boards and advocacy groups. And he said, I bet you he can help us. And he said, and as a matter of fact, he's in the building right behind us where we're having lunch. So he took me up there to meet this guy, Mike. And Mike said, hey, is Derek going to work with you? And I looked at him and he said, yeah. And I said, yes, he is. <laughs> and Mike said, well, in that case, I'll help you. Wow. And he, he was kind enough to do our 501c3 for us, didn't charge me a penny. Wow. Now he's my accountant. <laughs> there and, you go. Um, and that was kind of how it all started. And then I said, well, I want to start these multi-day rallies. I want to see how I can make a go of it. And, and we started it back in 2016. And since then, we have raised over $500,000. We've done four or five multi-day luxury rallies. We've done some getaway programs. We've gotten to know car clubs throughout the nation, organizations and tracks that all go out and do one-day programs on our behalf. And, and even when they charge just a little bit, it all adds up. And what that did for us helped us get our names out there, help more people recognize who we are. And, you know, you just kind of grow a little bit at a time. 
time. You know, Mark Davidson, who's been with me since the beginning, he's a Canadian who does all of our uh, website and branding. He's got a company called Intelligent Communications, and we knew each other from our days at Ferrari and Maserati working together. And I called him and said, can you help me out? And he has been my partner in cause, putting together all of the branding elements and and keeping us alive visually. And since then, we just take on whatever we can. And the little bits that come in from the smaller groups helped us in 2018 when California had the devastating fires. And we immediately started a California wildfire grant fund for people that had Parkinson's that had lost their homes and and needed a little bit of a push. And we didn't have tons of money to give, but we were able to help someone get a down payment on a trailer. We were able to help somebody else have some money from medical supplies that had been burned and that they needed quickly. And so, you know, we did what we could with people that were able to apply to us and we did all of it through social media to get our name out there. And then things started happening, you know, with hurricanes and with tornadoes and other catastrophic events. And we said, we can't do just California. We want to be national. So we changed it to an access to care fund and that we're raising money for. And through that, we got involved with the Parkinson's Foundation, which has centers of excellence throughout the country. And they have probably more than 35 of them. And we chose seven as kind of a uh, halo of areas where we were going to do events. And they're all around the country. And we've been able to get local groups to do local drives to raise money for them and assist them with patient care. So, you know, it's just been growing. Yeah, it's incredible. How do people find out more and how can they get involved? Uh, They can check our website and it's drive toward a cure. Dot org org and um, and there's lots of stuff to look at there we we did virtual wine tastings this summer along with the ones that you work with with yep. Adobe Road Winery and we raised a lot of money we had my friend and, and entertainer Vanessa Williams on that and it was great because you know she spent a little time talking about not her entertainment side but more of her being a car lover mm. and the type of cars that she was involved with so people mm. enjoyed talking to her and getting involved and drinking wine and raising some money and you know we're, we're just trying to do more and more. We did another virtual day with um, Derek Hill and Lynn St. James and Jean Jennings that we called Up Close and Personal uh, Stories of Automotive Legends, Untold Stories of Automotive mm. Legends. Nice. And we spent an hour just sharing, you know, and, and people getting to know people in the industry. So so we're trying, you know, we're, we're pulling from where we can when we can't go out and do drives. And we're looking to do more once, once everything changes in the world and we can go back to doing more drives. Brilliant. I love it. Let's take a short break. We come back. I'm going to talk a little bit about a challenge. So keep your seatbelts on. We'll be back in just a minute with Deb Pollock. Crash jewelry is handmade from the metal of luxury cars while preserving the original factory paint. Founder Christy Shimfke came up with the idea when she moved her jewelry studio into her husband's Los Angeles auto body shop. After watching beautiful Porsche ultraviolet fenders and Ferrari Rosso Corsa hoods head to the scrapyard, she developed her own unique upcycling process of cutting, bending, and sanding the metal into unique wearable pieces of beautiful automotive art. For Women's History Month here on Cars Yeah, Crash Jewelry is giving away a special Ferrari Art Deco cuff. The cuff includes an empowering message engraved inside. Enter to win today by subscribing at CrashJewelry.com. Plus, Christy is offering Cars Yeah listeners 10% off in March when you use the code Cars yeah at checkout. That's CrashJewelry.com and use the code Cars yeah today. And don't forget to follow Christy on Instagram at Crash Jewelry. I've discovered... Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion, and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. 
And by the way, if you use the code CARS, yeah, at the linkagemag.com website, you'll get $10 off your subscription. So go there today and save a few bucks and get a fantastic magazine at the same time. All right, Deb, we're back now. I always like to ask my guests to share a huge challenge, a big obstacle, something they had to overcome in their life. But this is really more about how you overcame it. What was the valuable lesson learned and how did you move forward after that situation to to take us on a little drive? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I I think as I think about it right now and and you asking like how women can get involved in the industry and and what can happen. I think about when I first got out of college and I had no clue what I wanted to do. I actually went to school for graphic design and I I minored in art history and I thought I was going to do art. And um, I had done well in school and gotten some awards and I took a job at a graphic design place. And after the first two months, I just hated it. It just was not what I wanted to do. It wasn't what I wanted to share. Show and I ended up losing that job just because I had no interest in it. And I had never been fired from anything in my life. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And that kind of opened up the world to possibilities because it really became something because of relationships and meeting people and one thing leading to another. And I took a temporary job somewhere that then introduced me to the folks at the PR agency. Mm. And I started there and I got thrown on the Mitsubishi business, not knowing a thing about cars. And there you go. So it, it was really about, you know, being open to other opportunities and, and maybe just not thinking that you know everything. Right. This is what I want to do. This is my path. This is the way I'm going to go. Yeah. No. Sometimes that locks you into something that you may find out you don't want. And if you committed a lot of time, i.e. schooling, uh, training, whatever, and you go, well, I can't abandon that after all this work. And then you end up on a treadmill that you're really unhappy to be on. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's just really been what it's been for me. And it just, it just keeps going forward by keeping an open mind. I love it. I love it. Let's talk about a big bucket list item. You're the kind of person that sets big goals. You achieve those big goals. What's a big bucket list for you that's upcoming in your life in the future? Something you'd like to do. Oh God. Well, you know, considering we've all been staying home for the last year, I think, I think what I really just want to do is travel. I want to, I want to go out and I want to drive and I want to travel. I've had a wonderful experience throughout my career and getting to go a lot of incredible places. And, and so for me, part of it is seeing places that I haven't seen, but also knowing where I'd like to go back. And I did a wonderful drive a few years back that went from through San Moritz, in Switzerland. And it was an amazing thing to see the Stelvio Pass Mm, and to (laughs) to, (laughs) to go through there and to drive that. And I think think that's what I'd like to do, but to, to really have the time to do it where I'm not in for 36 hours (laughs) doing it on somebody else's nickel, you know, doing it on my own. You've got a kind of a cool, well, you've got a couple of Porsches in your family, but one, one is a kind of cool car, a little black car of yours, right? It's actually green. It's, 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 oh, is it green? I thought it was black. It's green that sometimes it photographs black. Every picture I've seen of that car, I thought it was black. I've never seen it in person. It's like a British racing green color. Oh, wow. Okay. So tell, tell our listeners what this is because I had a Beck Spider for a while that I just loved that car. It was so much fun. Uh, Having a real 550 was not within my reach. Reach, and now they're way, way out of my reach. But the fact that the Beck Spider was a car that John Wilhoy built using all Porsche parts made me feel like it was that that legacy of Porsche. But you didn't have to worry much about it. You could leave a park somewhere and walk away and, eh, you know, I mean, it was my baby, but you know what I mean. It wasn't this 401k plus plan sitting there that you would never leave parked anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. Well, you know, this one is a, it's a '57 replica. It's a '57 Speedster, and it was built by Vintage Speedster yeah. out here in California. I actually bought it used. I bought it with eight thousand kilometers on it, and it's kind of funny because um, I was I was out at a Mecham auction. It was the first time I ever went to a Mecham auction. I was in Southern California, and anytime I would see a 356 anywhere, I went wild <laughs> because that's just my favorite car on the planet. And I was out there and there was, at the time, there was one 356 that was going off the block. And um, after it had, I went backstage to look at it. And this, this 
nice handsome guy comes by me as he sees me looking at it and he says, he says, is that one real or is it a replica? And I said, oh no, this one is every bit real. It just sold for close to 200,000. And he said to me, really, you know, it looks kind of like my replica. And I said, what kind of replica do you have? And he goes, why do you want to buy it? And I said, well, I don't know, you know, tell me a little bit about it. And and that was really how I fell into it. And he was getting rid of it because uh, he had three kids and he had given it to his wife and all she wanted was a Mercedes SUV. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, not- she wasn't going to do too much with this great little speedster, and I, of course, saw it and fell in love. And um, and it's kind of become a little a little mascot for Drive Tour to Cure. You know, it comes on all of the local rallies that I do, and it comes on my Porsche drives. And it's a lot of fun because I think people don't even really care that it's a replica. You know, I even when I drive it to get gas, people are, you know, they're smiling. They want to take a picture of it. They wave. And I tell them it's a replica, but they don't care. You know, it's a happy car. And yeah. that's that's the whole point of it. And it makes me really happy. You know, there's I joke that there's only three real parts to the car. And that's my that's my real wooden nardy steering wheel. Nice. It's my real cocoa mats, and it's my real VW engine at the back. <laughs> well, those cars are so much fun. I've been to their facility years ago when I was taking my daughter out to, uh, we went on a long drive from Gig Harbor to uh, University of Redlands, where she went to college, and we stopped at Vintage, and I got to see their facility. I was thinking about, at the time, buying one, and I was looking at that or Auto Mechanica's at Henry Reiser Builds and some of the others. Oh, and, they're beautiful ones yeah, out there. Yeah, they're really nice. I ended up buying a Vintage race car instead, but uh, at any rate, uh, they're they're really fun cars and it's a way to have that experience uh if you don't want to spend the two three four and sometimes half million dollars the 356s cost now oh yeah what's been the biggest greatest high point to date in your business something you're most proud of you know i'd have to say i mean well i'll tell you working with singer is something i am exceptionally proud of and even though i've had the pleasure of working with a lot of well-known companies there's something about starting you know, with someone from scratch and really seeing something grow and be recognized. So that's kind of the first part of it. Mm -hmm. But I think my biggest aha moment that came with them was the first time we ever went to Goodwood. And we had our first Targa that was on the Cartier lawn. And there were people from all over the world that were coming to see it and walking around. And I was kind of wanting to be almost like a fly on the wall to hear what they were saying. And and what I noticed was there were there were people that were that were just saying, you know, I read this in Octane, I read this here, I read this there, and telling their colleagues what they'd read. And working in PR for as many years as I had, to me, it was always in the beginning stages anyway, a job. You know, you, you're you're given your strategies and your objectives and this is what you want to do and and here's our problem and go get us some stories and whatnot. So you do what it is and then you move on to the next. Well, when I stood there after all those years in PR and I heard what these folks were saying, I realized that it wasn't just about getting the story. It was about the end user. It was about the people that could enjoy it and enjoy it and enjoy it. And it was about the people that really cared about what those words meant. And that was a real aha for me because I started believing that it wasn't just about being inspirational. It was about being aspirational Yes. and allowing people to enjoy what they couldn't necessarily have, but maybe hope to get someday and what they knew about it and how much joy we were giving to them. I have a book. I'm looking at it right now, sitting on my coffee table that Michael Harley worked on with you guys yes, and Rob. Yes. Uh, it's my dream book, I call it. I leave Of all the beautiful books I have, coffee table books, that's the one that sits there and I look at it every Thank day. You. It's why I work so hard. The dream of being able to order a singer, and I think I've shared this with both you and Rob, the few times I waste $2 on a lottery ticket, I write one <laughs> word on that ticket when they hand it to me, and it is singer. Uh, so, uh, you know, dreams do come true sometimes. We'll be be back in just a minute and I want to take you on what I call the ultimate drive. So keep your seatbelt on. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education, and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at TechForce.com. 
Org. All right, we're back. Now, I have a magic wand today, Deb, and I'm going to allow you to go on a dream drive. And there's some components to this that make it really special. You get to pick the vehicle. You get to pick who you ride with. Now, this could be somebody living or someone who's passed. And I need to know who's driving the car and what are you going to talk about? Well, I'll tell you who first. Okay. And um, first would be one of my heroines through all the years. I've, I've always been a huge fan of all people of Catherine Hepburn. Ah. And I think that she's someone who would fare really well in today's world where she's still here because she's so independent. And when we talk about women getting ahead and women really doing what they want to do, I think she was a big proponent of that. And there was a car that she drove and in one of her films, and it was it was a Bugatti. It was a Type 38. It was a Murphy Roadster. And I'm thinking that I think Jay Leno may have that exact car right now. I think I think he owned it later on, and he uh, and he's even had it in Pebble a, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But that car to me is just I, I'm a Roadster person anyway. I love convertibles. If I can drive a convertible every single day, I sure would. And I do. I've got I've got a convertible 996 and then I've got the Speedster. Yeah. But this Murphy Roadster was just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Every aspect of it. And if I could take that up and down PCH with, with Catherine Hepburn and have our scarves on and let our hair flow back in the wind, I think I would be a happy, happy, happy camper. You think? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Now, Let's, you know, Catherine Hepburn, I mean, what a powerhouse. What would be one thing you might ask Catherine? Um, I'd, I'd kind of ask her how she did it, how, <laughs> how, how you can live so long and never really compromise on your own beliefs. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, she was such a strong-willed person and, you know, she had great relationships with very strong people, you know, with Spencer Tracy, with, um, oh gosh, uh, Howard Hughes. I forget who else, but, you know, but she was fearless in everything she did. And I'd, I'd like to find out how you can have that amount of confidence mm. in everything you do. Yeah. She must have had an amazing upbringing, I would think, uh, with her family that gave her that kind of confidence. I always ask my guests about a book. Now, one book I just already mentioned, the Singer book, definitely, I want to put yeah. that. Is that book still, that's t- still available? It's, it's, it's still currently available. We are almost sold out of it. We did another reprint of it, and we're debating right now if we're going to make a third reprint, or it's really time for phase two. I mean, we've done so much since then. Yeah, you got to do phase two. It's got. I it's mean, gonna, going to be twice I, as thick. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when that book came out, we might have had maybe 45 or 50 cars that were shown, and we've already delivered more than 150 around the world. So we have a lot more to show. And then, of course, we've got the DLS coming out this mm, year. Yes, so, you yes. know, we've got a lot of exciting things ahead. So I, I think we're kind of ready for chapter two. I think so. Well, is there another book you'd like to share? You know, it's it's funny because I've been reading so many different types of books throughout this entire uh, time frame being home. I'm a big reader of biographies. I, I like to know, you know, it's kind of crazy because even when I was a kid and I'd read the newspaper, I'd, I'd always go, I, I shouldn't say this, but I used to go to the obituaries because I w- didn't care about the fact that they died necessarily. I wanted to read about how they lived mm. and I wanted to know what was the stories behind who they were. You know, I, I, I recently read a book about um, uh, Teddy Getty, who was the fourth wife of um, John Paul Getty. And she actually was the grandmother of, a, of somebody that I know. And she passed away when she was 102. She was pretty incredible. And, and there was so much that I learned from the book because she wasn't just involved in, in, you know, being his wife and being a philanthropist, but she started out, you know, being a singer and an entertainer mm-hmm. and traveling around the world and doing different things and about their hardships. So, so that was one thing. But the book that I just finished reading literally this week is called The Gift. And it's by Dr. Edith Eager. And she wrote it in her 90s. And she happens to be a Holocaust survivor. And it's called The Gift. It's 12 Lessons to Save Your Life. And, and it's really about, which is something really important during the time that we're in right now, which is about how, how you know, we're captive in ourselves of circumstances that we can't always control. You know, it, it just kind of happens. But, but how can we reinterpret those things and give new meanings to our life? And I think that's kind of like during this past year, that's what we're all kind of sitting back and reflecting on and seeing what's important and what's not important anymore and, and how to go forth. And so that was that was just a very inspirational book for me. Uh, awesome book. Absolutely. And you talk 
You spoke earlier about traveling. I think if you want a little uh, insight into where to put some money, put it in the travel industry because I think it's, it is going to explode once things open up. Everybody I talk to is ready to get out and see things because they've re-realized it's not about the things in our lives. It's about the experiences and the people in our Very lives. Very much so. And so if the if the airline industry and the the, the cruise industry can just hang on a little longer. Well, there was just an article that I, I read the other day about baby boomers and how they're all starting to make their plans now that the vaccines are out and everything is happening. And, and they termed it revenge travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, they said, you know, it's we, it's time for us to get our revenge and go out there and do the things we want to do. I have several friends who have invested in very cool trailers, tow rigs, cool mm-hmm. vehicles. Uh, they're going to get out. And, and this country, you don't have to leave the country. There is so much to see in the United States and so many roads to travel here. It can keep well, you busy Well, I'll tell you something, Mark, just really quick. Uh, drive Toward a Cure. Every summer, we do a program called the 75 Days of Summer, mm. and it's our summer drive. And consumers can sign up for 20 bucks. It's not about traveling in groups unless you choose to. And it's about how many miles you're, you can put on during the 75 Days of Summer. And you do some interviews. Instagram posts and we do weekly drawings oh. and at the end of the end of the summer we give out big awards and prizes and Michelin is a big sponsor whoever puts on the most miles will win a set of Michelin tires valued at $2000 and um, we're going to open that up for registrations probably in April even though you won't begin until June and it's a wonderful experience to see where people want to go what they want to do and to contribute for Parkinson's oh. at the same time and and you can even do it like a 5k where you set up your own page and have have people sponsor you and help us raise more funds and win rewards that way. That's all available on your website? It is. All it right. Is. Awesome. Great. Deb, you've taken me on another great ride, as you always do here on Cars Yeah. And every time we get to talk, I've really enjoyed learning more about you. Every time I have a talk with a returning guest, I learn a few more things, which is very cool. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Before I let you go, could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive into the sunset with that Catherine Hepburn? In a beautiful old Bugatti. <laughs> yeah. I think the one the one thing I'd say, my my only word of wisdom would be to imagine the possibilities. I love because, it. Because, you know, that's that's just the most optimistic thing that we can do and help us get to the next step. Imagine the possibilities. Do just that. And the many ways people could follow you are uh, let's see. On on Instagram personally, I'm at Corsa P R Gal, C O R S A P R G A L. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. So, you know, come say hi. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, and check out what Deb is doing here. Drive Toward a, cur- a Cure is so amazing what this has become. And I remember when you started this, just this little drive idea, and it's just exploded. So, so proud of what you've done. So important. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Deb, thank you for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for being uh, a returning guest here on Cars Down. Thanks for rounding out this incredible month I've had with 23 spectacular women. These are all women who are shifting the conversation until you and I talk again, which I'm sure will be soon. I'll see I you hope so. down the road. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.